Hi guys, Michelle from PD's Power Hour back, and another little fun blog, yay! <laughs> uh, today I wanted to kind of go dive into a little bit about the longevity of Amaro's and Apertifs. I'm calling this sort of like a follow-up episode to the podcast episode with my friend Pearl. It was the episode of the last episode of season one. I'll put the link in the description. So if you wanted to listen to that first before you watch the rest of this, cool. <laughs> if not, well, let's just get right into it. Um, the episode, We Taste Card Amaro, which is right here. Card Amaro is an, an Amaro from Northern Italy that is made with Moscato wine. It's at a lower proof, as most Amaros are. They generally are around about the 20% alcohol range. And cardamaro is no different. It's at 17%. So what they do is they fortify it with a little bit of neutral grain spirit, neutral grain spirit with the Moscato wine, let it age in barrels with things like cardoon, which is very similar to like an artichoke and blessed thistle, another herb and other, other little secret herbs and ingredients and let it hang out for a couple years in barrel, which gets this beautiful brown color. And it also has a touch of sweetness to it because you are technically adding a mistel to it, which a mistel means like adding a for, uh, spirit to stop the fermentation. And that stops the process of the yeast eating the sugar. So that's how you get it to be a little bit more sweet. Oh my God, that was a lot of boring technical stuff and you're probably like glazed over and don't care, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> but... I love this stuff because, one, it's so underappreciated. I think people should go out and try these things. Amaros are fantastic. They're easy day drinking stuff, which is obviously what I'm doing right now. I mean, it's not obvious, but what I'm doing right now, I have the day off. It's a nice little afternoon. I'm going to do some podcast editing and enjoy a little car tomorrow. It's a little bit lighter. In, it's lighter in alcohol, so I won't feel like I'm getting too hammered in the middle of the day. <laughs> but it's a nice, enjoyable drink. And people, I think, just are kind of scared of it or don't know what it is. I mean, the labels are quite like, what the heck is this? Card Amaro. And especially in the U.S. market, nobody knows what this means. I mean, there's the general, there's spirits, there's whiskey, vodka, gin, tequila, going on and on. But when it comes to things like aperitifs and Amaros, I think people get a little bit scared. But I want you to take that leap, take that leap, take that chance. When you see a random bottle on the shelf that has like a crazy amount of Italian on it, they're not going to usually be too expensive. This one cost me $24. So, you know, it's not a huge investment like you're trying to try a $50 whiskey and you don't know if you're going to like it. This is a little bit more palatable on the wallet. So in the episode with the lovely Pearl... We talk about how much we love this stuff, but that was a fresh bottle. This is the exact same bottle that I had with her. Oh, it must have been like a month and a half ago or something. And so typically these things, because they are at a lower proof, they're not going to last for forever. So you should try to consume them within a couple months. But what I wanted to try to do today was see how it tasted different than the first time I had it a month and a half ago. And you're probably like, Michelle, how are you going to remember how it tasted a month and a half ago? Well, I've had this a lot. <laughs> I've had it fresh a lot. And when you're, this is going to sound kind of douchey, I guess, but when you're in the wine business, you kind of have to train yourself to remember how things taste when you are tasting them, as well as bottles and air regions and such like if I'm tasting Sancerre with the Kimmeridgian soil or you know some BS like that I should try to focus in on what those flavor profiles are so when I taste something that's not of Kimmeridgian soil from Sancerre I can tell the difference so you kind of have to train yourself and that's what I kind of did I'm not going to say I'm a professional at it because I'm not but you kind of have to just remember so for tasting this fresh Cardamaro has lots of bright acidity. There's not much viscosity. There's some viscosity to it, but it's got a nutty oakiness to it. Little lemon notes. It's very refreshing, but also like kind of like a nutty brightness. Like it's not a nutty heavy. Like you think of like having like an almond dessert or something, something rich. So how does it taste now? Typically, these things, it says on their uh, website, 
that it should last about a couple weeks at the most, so like three to four weeks. Well, it's been obviously a little bit longer because <laughs> I've been a little slow at drinking this, which is okay. So we're going to see, Does is it... Is it bad after if you've let it hang out is it past its expiration date? And should I just like down this in one go kind of feel? So we're going to see. First off, the color is a little bit darker than whenever I had it initially. And that's normal. Things tend to oxidize. They get a little bit darker in color. So it's a little bit more of a darker brown than it is whenever I first opened it. So the nose... Like when you first open this, you get the nose that it's very bright, kind of nutty. You get some herbaceousness to it, but I feel the herbaceousness are, is now starting to become more prominent. It's almost like they call it secondary tertiary notes. As the wine ages, a wine ages, it starts to get different flavor profiles. It's kind of like this. It's starting to age a little bit and you can tell. It doesn't have quite the sharpness and the brightness as it got whenever I first opened it, but it's still a pleasant nose. Yeah, you kind of still get that almost like oregano feel, little nutty, Marcona almond. I love Marcona almonds. So let's taste. Yeah, it's definitely not as nutty as when you first have it. You get a little bit on the finish there but it's a little bit more herbaceous as it ages. And you can definitely feel like, so the acidity before it hits you straight off the bat, this is kind of like the acidity is like secondary. Like it just hangs out, then it comes up at the end. So that's how you can kind of tell like, and if you have to figure this out on, on your own, how your palate feels, but like the acidity is not up in front. It's sort of slow and at the end. So it's definitely on the tail end of its life. I'm still going to drink it because it still tastes delicious. It's still got those beautiful flavor notes that I loved initially. It's not like it's dead. No, 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 no. Not like vinegar. No. But I should definitely be a little bit more proactive in terms of using it and trying to consume it because I give this maybe a couple more weeks and that's being very generous. Like I should probably try to consume this oh, within two weeks, I think. Not that it's going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to die or get poisoned if I don't drink this after a certain amount of time. No, wines aren't like that. It's just going to start taste a little vinegary and going to start not have the acidity. See, the acidity is something that you can really tell when things are kind of fading off. Like the first day you have it, it has a lot of acidity. The next day you have a, a, a wine, just generally in wine, maybe it's like it's the acidity starts to go down a little bit. The Fruit, fruit profiles start to taste a little instead of fresh fruit, maybe like uh, dried fruit almost or a little bit of candy fruit, depending on what the wine is. But this, it's like the nuttiness and the oakiness sort of is going away and the herbaceousness is starting to take a, a more forefront and the acidity is a, is a bit less. It's still medium. It's not high. High is what we had initially and now it's about medium. So it's still delicious. I'm still going to put some cart. I'm still going to drink this. I'm probably just going to throw some club soda at it to lighten it up a little bit. Since its acidity has dissipated, I'm just going to throw club soda in it and put a little squeeze of lemon and voila, fancy cocktail. So thanks guys. Uh, try some car tomorrow. Try some Amaro's. I love this stuff. Check out PD's Power Hour because... I mean, maybe you can listen to the episode and figure out what the hell this stuff is and then watch this again and be like, oh, that's what it is. So <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye.